Principles of Electricity and Magnetism, Part 3B Backplanes. Well, if there's a Part 3B, then there is a Part 3A. So if you've just jumped into the YouTube channel or you're on the disk that you can get off the PLC Professor website, <clears throat> you probably want to watch Part 3A before you watch Part 3B. Um, it's probably just going to be called uh, Part 3 Backplanes because when we recorded it, we didn't realize it was going to take more than one session to get the recording finished. But we like to keep it under 30 minutes. So we do have a Part 3B. And this video uh, was, it's a Basic Principles of Electricity video. But it's specifically aimed at backplanes for computers, specifically programmable logic controllers. So here we have a circuit card, a sheet of fiberglass. Now I realize it's an ugly green, but pretend it's the same color as the printed circuit boards that you've seen. It's fiberglass and it's an insulator. And to this we add eight pieces of copper, each as long thin strips. And just to make it interesting, let's add another three groups of eight, which will give us a total of 32 copper traces. Now, the way they make these print circuit boards, it's actually a fiberglass substrate, in other words, a sheet of fiberglass that has a coating on one side of copper. It actually might have a coating on both sides and be a two-layer board. But we'll just say there's a coating on one side of copper. They photographically expose a uh, photosensitive chemical on the surface of the copper and wherever the light hits it alters the composition and then they put it in an acid bath and it eats away the copper except for the image which are these 32 copper traces. Each of these copper traces is a piece of copper that we can control the electrical state of. We can make it positive by removing electrons. We can make it negative by adding electrons. Or it could be neutral as it is here. In this particular case, we show no sources of positive or negative in this illustration. So each trace is an object that we can control the electrical state of. Okay, let's add some electrical connections. So, if you remember the photograph that we started with for a backplane, it was um, a parallel pattern of copper traces going horizontally, and then periodically there were groups of uh, little soldered connections. So, um, we're going to add these connections, and we're going to connect it to a circuit board. So when I say a circuit board, I mean another circuit card that is not part of the backplane, but it's connected to the backplane through these connections. You could even say that this is a connector, if you like. Next, we'll add some terminals so we can connect to the outside world. Or you could say these screw terminals are for the field devices or to connect to the field wiring. Since we are adding these connections to connect outside devices into the copper traces on the backplane circuit board, we will call this an input interface. But because we're going to make it removable, in other words, you can plug it in and unplug it, we're going to call it a module. So we'll call this our input module, and it's an interface between the outside world and the backplane. However, we will want to share these 32 copper traces on the backplane with other connections and other modules. Therefore, we cannot leave the terminals permanently connected to the copper traces on the backplane as it appears they are here. To facilitate sharing the backplane conductors with other devices, we add electronic switching to switch the terminals in and out of the backplane electrically.
Looking at this module from the outside, all we see is the terminals for connecting field devices. And if you've ever looked at PLC hardware, uh, each module has a few LEDs to give you status, but if you open the little uh, cover, you're going to see a bunch of screw terminals. That's what you're looking at right here. Those screw terminals are for field wiring. But because we don't want the field wiring permanently connected into the back plane for two reasons. The first one is we want to share this back plane with other modules. The second is the back plane is probably 5 volts DC level. And field wiring can be anything from uh, millivolts to 120 volts. Some cases even 240 volts. So we have to have some isolation between the field wiring, those screw terminals, and the connection to the back plane, both voltage level wise and to control whether or not this module is electrically connected to the back plane, even though it's plugged in there. Okay, these landing terminals, as I said, are for uh, landing the field wiring from the input devices. So if you have photo eyes, push buttons, limit switches, you're probably going to have a common voltage connection that goes to all the devices and then they have a connection that comes here and then there's also a common from the other side. Okay, so this is our input module. This is an input module to insert electrical influences from the outside into and onto the back plane to control the electrical state of the copper traces on the back plane. Remember we started this with controlling the state of a piece of copper with a battery. So in this case we're not using the battery but we're still using EMF, electromotive force, to change the state of the copper traces on the back plane. So what if we want to get electrical influences from the back plane out to the outside devices? In other words, this input module allows us to get the electrical influences or the state of input devices like photo eyes, proximity switches, limit switches, push buttons, to get the state of those input devices into the back plane. What if we want to get the state of the back plane out to devices like motor starters, solenoids, etc. We had another set of conductors to another connector or circuit board. We add connections to the outside world and we add electronic switching. Now looking at these two um, these two rectangles here they look pretty much identical except for the color and the distribution of graphics. Well it really doesn't make any difference what side you put the screw terminals on but because we tend to read in English from left to right, we just intuitively in our graphics have things coming in from the right and going out on the left. That's not actually the case. It's irrelevant of up, down, north, east, west, south, etc. Left, right, whatever. So, but um, this is what we're doing for our illustration. Um, this is our output module. Again, the only thing that is really visible from the outside are the connection terminals. Now, one manufacturer, one that I use a lot, uh, traditionally uses blue for input modules and green for output modules. So, just to keep things simple, that's exactly what I did right here. And of course, besides being blue for input and green for output, they also put an ID on the front that says input module, output module, or it has a part number and in the part number you'll see an I for an input module or an O for an output module. This is pretty much true across the board for most manufacturers. As an observation at this point, you can see that the two sets of screw terminals could be electrically connected one-to-one -one if both sets of electronic switching are activated. So if you were to activate the electronic switching on both of these cards, then the input terminals would be connected directly to the output terminals. However, this is we're leading up to a programmable logic controller here, so what we're going to do is we're going to 
insert more things on the back plane and then when we finally add a controller and we'll add a few more copper traces so the controller can communicate with the modules not on those 32 copper traces but on another uh, little set of copper traces to activate one module at a time and that's why they call this an active backplane okay and as I said those are the screw terminals for landing uh, fill wiring to the output device well you think of landing the wires from the output devices and that's true you bring the wire from the output devices to here but the signal is going out to the output devices okay so here we have an input and an output module so who and how are we going to control which of the two is switched into the back plane at any given time let's add some control to the situation first we need another set of back plane connections which we will add here in a minute uh, first we'll just go ahead and throw in the processor so we added the connections and we added a connector or a circuit card and then this new module which is going to end up being our processor has to have some electronics to control the signals on the back plane because if the processor wants the input module conditions then it needs to read them in but if it's sending information out to the output module it needs to send them out so there needs to be some special switching in this processor module to control the back plane from a influence in other words whether it's reading voltage off the copper traces or putting voltage on the copper traces okay and of course we need a brain central processing unit a processor the CPU is going to need some RAM random access memory to store its list of instructions and to store the results from reading the input module so as you will find out if you don't know already the processor is going to activate the input module then it's going to take the voltage states off the back plane and store them as zeros and ones in memory as a snapshot of the state of the input devices the CPU also needs a guidebook to interpret instructions and retrieve features we call this firmware there's many things you can uh, say that the firmware does but those are just a few this is all good but how do we get the instructions to the controller to follow and do our bidding we need some communications and so we have communication electronics that interfaces to really everything on the board however that still doesn't give us a way to get anything in or out of this processor other than by the back plane so to that we add uh, com ports now I show two com ports here because any um, when, when, if you're going to do a project of any value on the factory floor you need two com ports one for the HMI human machine interface for your screen and the other for your laptop to do online editing and monitoring and troubleshooting you don't want to have to disconnect the screen and remove part of your control while you're watching the process so we have two com ports here one really big thing is missing how does the processor control the electronic switching in each of the modules we need to add another bus of copper traces which you see just came in from the bottom and we will call it the control bus notice that it is connected to each module location or slot now there's still one more thing that's missing so let's just review this real quick we have through electronic switching we have screw terminals on a module that is designed to put voltage states on the back plane that's the blue input module 
Then on the other side, we have the green output module that has screw terminals that go out to output devices like motors, starters, solenoids, lights. It is designed to take the voltages off of the back plane and to then control these output devices. And then we have a processor which is connected into the same back plane and it is capable of reading voltages off of the back plane from input modules, sending voltages out onto the back plane to output modules, but because we have more than one module, we need to only switch in to the back plane, the input module, the output module. And to do that, we added that last set of six thinner copper traces down on the bottom of the graphic. So the processor, through those six traces, with an encoded signal, energizes one module at a time. So some chassis have 17 slots, some have 13 slots, some have 13 slots, and then you can extend them with a ribbon cable out to a total of 32 slots. Now, of course, one of them is the processor, so that leaves you 32 input and or output modules. So the processor, through that last six conductors we added on the bottom, is going to control which module is activated at a time, only one at a time. Okay, what else is missing? Well, how do we control the electrical state of these copper traces? A supply of electrical energy. Now, we used a battery to begin with. In this case, we're going to um, just add a power supply. So we throw in another two traces of copper, but we change them to red and black for positive and negative. And these are permanently assigned to carry either a deficiency of electrons, that would be the positive red trace across the top, and the other one carrying an extra supply of electrons across the bottom, black and negative. Red is traditionally the positive side of the power supply and black is the negative side. And there you have it. A back plane with a 32-bit bus for data and another bus for control of the modules. All controlled by the processor. So uh, this pretty much will conclude the electrical principles of a computer or PLC backplane. So we're not really going into the input modules, the output modules, or the processor. We're just explaining the general idea of what the backplane does for you. Okay, so thank you for watching another Principles of Electricity and Magnetism, this one on backplanes. And part 3B concludes part 3. There is a part 1 and a part 2 that are really basic electricity and magnetism. Now, I don't do a lot of magnetism. I added that into the title because occasionally I do talk about magnetism, especially when it comes to transformers, solenoids, or the influence of the magnetic field from an electron. So really, you can't really separate electricity and magnetism very far apart. So again, thank you for watching. The next step from this in what we were actually producing would be to go to um, an, another lecture that's going to be on how to build an advanced PLC trainer with analog. We already have one on YouTube and in the disc set that, um, well, it's on YouTube. We're not offering on disc yet, but it shows you how to build a little hardware trainer with six toggle switches and a, 12, a 24 volt DC wall wart that's a power adapter. We call them wall warts because you plug them in the wall and it's a wart. Anyway, so that would be the next step would be to find the advanced PLC trainer video and it will use some of the graphics you just saw and it will continue on explaining why we're building it the way we're building it. Again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, you can find manuals and discs on plcprofessor.com.